Hey, this is Steve Good on the Coin Chat with Yuri Cataldo, my co-host, and today we're joined by a special guest, Christian Cangro, CEO of Change. Uh, welcome to the show, Christian. It's great to have you. Thanks, Steve. It's great to be at the show. So you you guys did your ICO back in September, October of last year, not last year, year no, it's 2017. We're in 2019 now. Right. <laughs> and we... Um, kind of do a look back and say this where you were. We'd love to hear, you know, what's been going on, how you've gotten to where you are. So um, before we start, do you want to just give a quick introduction in terms of where you guys are at and what you've been doing? Sure. So basically at Change, we're, we're building investment focused Challenger Bank. And um, back in 2017, when we uh, I had the ICO, basically we had the card uh, uh, only testing in Singapore and since then uh, we have come to Europe with m most of our team. Uh, we are launching the cards uh, basically this winter. So this is actually one of the cards just here. So with this you can pay. Hey, finally. Hey, all right. In the entire European <laughs> Union with, uh, with the different, uh, you know, you can use a euro basically balance, but you can in essence uh, basically convert the different cryptocurrencies as well. Uh, and we're right now adding stocks as well. We've got a cryptocurrency uh, exchange license from, from Estonia. And I mean, there's a lot of the exciting things that we've done. Most important thing, you can sign up for the card now. Uh, and we're shipping this basically during this winter already. I mean, oh, wow. I signed up for the card a really <laughs> long time ago. So let's talk about that because that's been a major pain point that a lot of people have. Let's. I don't know if, we should, if complaining is the right word or trolling is the right word, but tell us what happened. I mean, we know what happened with, great, with Wavecrest as a vendor that was supplying to Zappo cards and to advanced cash cards and to BitPay cards and everyone got slammed by it and you guys got slammed by it. Tell us what that was like. What happened from your side of things? Exactly. So basically our story is at first we tried to do that in Singapore. Um, you know, that was in 2017 in Singapore you know, the, the regulation wasn't really favorable. So we decided more to focus in Europe. Uh, so in Europe, we started working with Wavecrest, what is a card integrator. We, were, we got approval, we were pretty much ready to launch. And then basically one day we come to work and Wavecrest dead. Yeah. Uh, you know, so no, basically we cannot ship the cars. Entire team was really kind of down at that point. But then we were like, hey, this is our opportunity to be one of the first on the market. And right now, actually, we're going to be the second after Wirex, the second uh, crypto friendly card on the market. And this Wire, card. Yeah, so, Wirex, well, you've got Wirex and sort of Revolut. I mean, Revolut is more like real banking. Um, they've got their own license for banking. They've broken off from Lloyds Bank now in the UK and they're spouting off. But, you know, it's not quite the same because you can buy crypto with their card. And I have a Wirex and a Revolut card, so I know how they both work. And to be honest, <laughs> between them, you know, if we wanted to do card comparisons, I'd say Revolut works better <laughs> because you don't have to sit there converting the money on the fly. But we've been, I mean, certainly in Europe and in the UK, we need another card. We need something else for comparison and competitiveness. So, you know, a true sure. card where you can deposit crypto in and mm -hmm. spend it on the fly is, is absolutely a gap in the market right now. Sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you take Revolut, it's still built on like financial instruments. So right. you can actually send Bitcoin in, for example, convert and then pay. No, you cannot. You can only buy it and convert it back, but you can't send exactly. it. Back. Exactly. And as crypto fans, and if we imagine this kind of decentralized, you know, future of world, everything's based on one electronic cash for everybody, and you can build service on top of this. This kind of Revolut solution doesn't really help, right? Uh, so I think you know, Wirex really has something going on, but I think there's so much better. Uh, things what you can do on this and we're getting right. a payment just like wirex we should be getting this in uh, february or march so that would also cover the entire european union and this card what i have in my hand these are live transactions with this card so this is not only basically you know, something theoretical we actually go we can it's a team can already go in a shop and try it out basically and it works so you so i told really you i should have flown from london to estonia just to go pick up my card it would have been so much you easier have. i know it been a lot faster. i'll tell you what so christian i'll tell you what here. my oh, team is here God. Hello, Change. team. Yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll, I'll tell you what, I will, I will commit to this. So when I get my card, I will happily, you know, do another episode with you guys to talk about the usage of that card. And I'll compare it to the YRX and Revolutes because I'll have a baseline of all three. I'll tell you, the, the one limiting factor for me with YRX and using it is that every time I'm in a shop and I want to use it, if I'm sitting there with Bitcoin or Ether in the card, 
I literally have to stop, go on my phone, and I have to start converting the money. And then I can spend that. I have to wait a few seconds for the transaction to complete before I can actually spend. That mm -hmm. is kind of annoying. To be sure. honest. So I, is, I mean, have you guys dealt with that problem in terms of the on-demand transaction part of it? Um, so yeah, as all like crypto enthusiasts in this office, I mean, we actually have seven different nationalities uh, in this office because we're all fans and we want to make this the future. In essence, still change card and wireless card, they're both euro cards what you basically can use to send in crypto and convert and then basically pay in euro so we're still going to have some of these uh, hustles to go through but we anticipate in the future this is solving solving itself right uh, so so yeah so that's that really comes down to the card integrators and the card networks why you know you had these hustles but we see uh, solutions to solve it we we'll push notifications and so on so um so yeah we definitely are listening to customers every week there are people who are in our waiting list who are giving feedback. We really built the kind of like a iteration measure learn framework where people come to the office, give feedback, how do we want to use it? And people do want to spend crypto, but we're going to need to wait a bit longer to make this. Uh, uh, oh, we've lost him. We lost you for a second there. Sorry, just, ah. repeat, just repeat the last part. So, so what I was saying is, I think we all want to have this decentralized global crypto bank and you, you know, build services for the whole entire world and ship some kind of a payment method to actually use this crypto and so on. But in essence, why we came to Europe as well is we want to build, you know, uh, play in the regulatory framework and kind of like follow all the rules what MasterCard and Visa and the regulators have. And for this, there's going to be some little hiccups, uh, for example, like WireX has, but we anticipate this solving itself in the future. And in essence, we're going to be one of the first crypto-friendly cards in Europe. So as an investor or a contributor, you can be happy about that. For sure, yeah. Do you, so do you think just getting the card out is going to have an impact on the, the price of our, our depressed coin? <laughs> uh, yeah, so, so basically what, I, what so we are one of the first uh, companies in Europe, but basically the, we made a bold statement with that we want to actually convert our utility tokens or at least give opportunity to the community to convert them to equity life tokens mm -hmm. because we talk with the community and a lot of people although we wrote in the white paper that it's the utility token access token and so on they still felt like you know they were contributing they want to have more upside in the project so therefore we have been talking with the stoner regulator to give these guys who hang on and give us support we want to make them you know having the upside from the company and then we want and therefore we want to convert our utility token or at least give a chance to convert this to equity life token and have the upside as, as a VC in a sense. So, so that's exciting. Wouldn't that make it like an STO token then? Exactly, so that's, that's the goal, uh, but it wouldn't be a full security. Uh, what we are talking right now with Estonian regulator, what's actually one of the Estonian, you know, startup landscape is amazing by the way. And you know, the regulator really talks with us and we're trying to find a solution. So it wouldn't be a security, but you can still kind of a, a shared upside with the community. Right. If it would be a security, then we could only trade at the T0 and different security exchanges. So there wouldn't be liquidity. So it's always a trade off. Okay. Because I mean, if you invest in Spotify, for example, you're going to be illiquid for the next, you know, if you invest in the beginning for seven years. That's so, right. you know, we, we want to have the liquidity of the crypto, but we also want to give the upside. So that's the challenge. Yeah. And I would encourage all the contributors to hang on, you know, see like everything what we're doing in this office. Is legit come to the office give us feedback be in the uh, you know waiting list and we're gonna uh, solve the token uh, kind of a challenge as well so one of, one of the things i would say is that in, in the process of doing this you know wouldn't that put you at risk of being delisted on places like kucoin because you know the exchanges only accept utility token and just by publicly saying this doesn't this put you at risk of being delisted by these exchanges uh, so, so not with this token what we have. So right now, basically, we have a full utility token, yeah. but you can use what you can use for payment for the service. So, for example, right now our service is free. Everybody can come to our app, buy cryptocurrency, trade it commission free, and now we're going to ship the card as well, so you can uh, basically convert, uh, convert, and then uh, you know pay with our debit card. And we're going to have stocks coming up very soon as well. This token basically is right now used only for you know paying for the service. So when we have a premium plan, but the new token, what we're going to do is for the token swap, it's going to be secure, you know, equity like token, and that's going to be a completely new game with what are, what are the exchanges going to be listed and so on. How oh, interesting! Very cool. Um, Henry, do you want to jump in? 
So I was just, I wanted to back up just a second to just talk about your interest in cryptocurrency. So, because your, your project is very ambitious, what was it that made you want to get involved in this and launch this company in 2017? Yeah, so basically I was, um, so my, my brief story is I was in the Netherlands uh, doing my first tech company. My first company I actually started in Estonia when I was in high school, but the first tech company was in the Netherlands. Um, I sold that to in, uh, Dutch investors, came to Singapore. I was hired as a CFO of one of the VC companies there in Singapore. And listen, I just saw how much, how bad the banks really are. <laughs> and then I was trying to understand because, you know, I saw all of these fintech companies in VC. And, and then I was trying to figure out why is it so? And why is it so? It's because, like, in, especially in Asia, in most of the countries, the governments are like super over regulating this industry. And especially in, in Asia as well, there is somewhat there is corruption and stuff like this as well. So actually, the service of people get it's so bad. So I was, and that that what made me my mind think like, okay, how can you solve that? How you know there is global competitive market of service providers. Why people in Indonesia, for example, or Vietnam, or some countries in Europe get such a bad service? And then I realized it's the overregulation uh, and, you know, corporate interest and lobbying. And then obviously that was the part when I got really interested in crypto because crypto can be this platform, yeah. you know, on what you can build this competitive market. I mean, it shouldn't, it should be that the best, you know, in lending company in the US would have customers around the world. The best investment company uh, in, the, in Indonesia would have customers around the world. That competitive landscape would over, completely overhaul the service quality. Yeah. Uh, but obviously now if you go in depth how it's going to happen, you need to have decentralized identity to do it. You need to have decentralized services. Well, you're exactly right about that. I mean, one of the things, because I spent most of my career in fintech before I walked out of it and did crypto. And the biggest problem that I was running, I always run into was know your customer. They didn't know their customer really because you have the private bank that has their customers. You have the asset management that has their customers. They have the investment bank that has its customers. Treasury service has its customers and I can keep going. And what ended up happening was that oftentimes, you know, they had database, 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 and they had no idea that they had 12 customer records for the same customer. Exactly. It's just so hard to manage. And these banks have gotten just too big. So not having an integrated platform that's like blockchain driven to own the customer data and centralize it and then let the customer control their own data in a single place. It's amazing. Like if I go on a banking system and I change my address and then I discover another system and I go, but I've already changed my address. What's the problem? And I'm ending up changing things. And it's not just banks. It's, you know, big telecom companies and pharma companies. These companies have gotten too big and they've lost their ability to control and centralize data in a simple way. And this is, I mean, you're hundred percent on the mark for me because I know the problem. I lived in it too. You know, I had big clients like Deutsche, JP Morgan for many years. And yeah. I saw this time and again, we were always just dealing with IT problems and regulated problems. And oh my God, it was just constantly something. <laughs> no, for sure. I mean, uh, and also like if, if you, if you go like in depth in this, like I think like this financial system can be so much more democratized. You know, if you, if, you, if you build it on blockchain, I mean, money moves like emails, right? I mean, this should be like given. But also if you look at SMEs, I mean, why shouldn't you be able to invest, you know, in different SMEs in your neighborhood and give them, I don't know, funding and then see how they're doing or even just invest in one machine in, in the factory, for example. For sure. You know, you can build, but right now we're building a system where the infra of the banking is so expensive and so slow, only big companies can raise public funding. It shouldn't be like this. I mean, in order to protect consumers, you can have, for example, you know, smaller tickets and there are a lot of things that the US is starting with this new regulation to kind of make this more democratic, this fundraising process. But yeah, right now it's only big corporations. The infra is too expensive for SMEs to fundraise, but also for people to send money. The source quality in the, you know, local banks is not good enough. So yeah, that's why change is here. We wanna build a more democratic, more open uh, yeah. financial system for the companies and for, for the users. Yeah. Now, if I, yeah. If I, so, go ahead, go ahead, Yuri. I was gonna say, so, so with that and your ambitious plan to kind of change how banking is going, where do you see it headed in the next, I don't know, five to 10 years and how do you see change being part of that? Yeah, so, so in, I can tell you first of what we're tr trying to, uh, what, what we're trying to achieve this year and then kind of like what's the envision. So right now, because a lot of people look crypto more as an investment, so in the, Right now in Europe, we're trying to build out something what we call the Investment Focus Challenger Bank. So if it has a debit card, you can invest commission-free in cryptos there. You can track your portfolio, can send cryptos in. You can also invest commission-free in stocks. 
because people do want to diversify away from cryptos as well. They can invest in different crowdfunding stuff. So everything is basically in there. So we want to be a challenge banking market in Europe is growing 50% every year right now. Really? So basically that's kind of the first thing wow. where we see the problem and we're trying to solve that. So having debit cards out, you can spend investments, whether it's Bitcoin or so on, and you can have different uh, other assets. The end goal is obviously diversify away from this and really build centralized services and go from investment also to insurance, lending, and so on. But for this, uh, in order to do that, you need to have decentralized identity, decentralized actually banking. And uh, um, I think that's the next step uh, yeah. from the side. So, you know, when I go back and I look at your white paper, I mean, I, I, I'm going to be really honest here because it's fun to be, you know, a little bit controversial because I want to help our listeners and I want our, you know, all the investors who've been involved with change to hear about this. When I go yeah. back and I look at the white paper, what I saw at the time, and I loved the paper, by the way, it was brilliant. And um, uh, Frances Francisco, right? You're the marketing guy. He's been, yeah. yeah, he's been brilliant throughout being very responsive and has been, you know, a great advocate to the, to the company. So we should give him a shout out because he's been a great guy. But one of the things that I, I noticed in the paper, it was, it, it was a very, you know, retail focused banking paper. Um, it talked about loans. It talked about insurance. It felt like I was signing up to, you know, the first retail bank. What I see right now in terms of what you have is more like light exchange, light trading with some really cool features that I've seen in the app about, you know, do you want to trade in, in uh, stocks and do you want to trade in, uh, in, do you want to trade in, I think it was an index or something like that. So mm -hmm. how, how do you feel that you're, you know, performing in terms of where you wanted to be on the white paper versus where you are today? Because I think what we want to know is, you know, as investors or as users or as people that are following the project is, you know, what's gotten in the way from delivering those things and what are you going to do to get back on track so we start to see all those types of retail features. Yeah. Um, so if I compare us with a lot of ICO companies, I think actually we're one of the best performing ICO companies. First, I think we've made really prudent financial decisions. So for example, we have liquidated at the right time compared to like a lot of ICOs we've raised like tens of millions of dollars. Oh, yeah. Also, <laughs> also like I consider like also this is financial side that actually we're focusing on the token, we're building something you know, what wouldn't be like a 10x token, what just completely tanks right now and everybody kind of like, you know, so, so we're trying to work with the community and the regulator to build something that will bring value to the community. So I think like on one side, we've performed really good on the financial or let's say kind of a contributor communication side. In terms of our product, I think, you know, we've done a lot of good things there as well. So it, we've done the onboarding, successful on customer onboarding, what we promised in the white paper. We've done the wallet, what we promised in the white paper. Right now, we actually are testing the card, what we promised in the white paper. So only thing what, so, and this is going to be live very soon. I'm very confident in this. So basically, the only thing what right now from the white paper, what is not fulfilled is the marketplace side. What was one of the most exciting things for us as well. Uh, and with the marketplace, we understood it's a really large consortium of things, so investment, insurance, and credit. So we started with credit investment because this is what the community was most excited about, especially okay. because of right. and, yeah. Yeah. and before, you know, we thought, okay, what does this investment marketplace really look like? And, you know, we, we learned from the community, they don't only want to have cryptos, they want to have cryptos, they want to have stocks, they want to have crowdfunding. So basically, we're building this marketplace now. Right. Uh, with, right now, already talks with actually equity license providers as well, so we can actually diversify away from cryptos to also equities. Uh, so, um, to your question, I think we've fulfilled three out of the four things already in the white paper. And the marketplace, what is the most time-consuming thing? We started from the first thing: what is the investment investment marketplace? Yeah. Uh, and uh, in terms of licensing as well, I mean, we're building playing in fintech. We already uh, gave in a payment license application. What would allow people to transfer salaries uh, to our to our account? Okay, what so that's what cool. Yeah. What yeah. also allows us to hold euros on our account. So basically, we're really kind of like getting this getting this regulatory approvals and clearances before the license should come in quarter and then the quarter one. So yeah, I think exactly. I think for the community, what I would like to say is, um, you know, I think compared to many of the normal startups and comparing to the ICO companies, if you look at what we've done financially with the token, what we've actually delivered into the product, uh, I think we're at a good place, but we do understand people expect even more. And sure. sure. That's why we our eight different nationalities working here every day and kind of trying to fulfill all of the promises yeah. and bring it to kind of a change.
I mean, nobody in this office just wants to give a, build a incrementally better product. We want right. to change the world. We want to look back. And with this community of 5,000 people, we really changed something. And I think we're really on track of doing this. Yeah, because I, I think, you know, once you have the cards out, what I would love to see is the travel insurance that goes with it because there'd be nothing nicer than having the card and the travel insurance. And, you know, there's, you know, when we travel, I mean, one of the things we often run into is, oh, you know, I need to get, you know, insurance for my travel, not just like, you know, for lost luggage, but like real travel insurance that I'm traveling abroad if I get into trouble or, you know, there's an accident, I need medical care. It's that level of depth in terms of the retail side of things that I think would be a really added great, I know it's in the white paper, but it'd be a great value add to really bring that out. You know, exactly. loans, I mean, loans are, you know, are messy <laughs> and people default on them and it's always a risk to a business. But I mean, they're all part of, you know, a retail service offering, paying bills, you know, paying salaries. I think for me, that's what my hope was that we'd start to see. Um, it sounds like you're making progress. I think we just want to see those things coming out. We're, we're excited about it. And I think because 2018 was a bit of a, dare, dare I say, a bit of an epic fail year where so many projects from 2017 didn't deliver anything. And unfortunately, Wavecrest derailed you guys into the same camp as everybody else. Although I know you guys are working hard, but it, it's been frustrating to see the uh, nothing delivered in 2018 for ICOs. So I think there's a lot of pressure on now from the communities uh, to see things coming out now. No, for sure. By the way, Steve, this is an amazing idea, you know, to fund the insurance with, with the card as well. So actually, like, I probably my marketing guys are going to kill me, but actually, like, one of the things what we've been floating around is you know, <laughs> that we basically have premium cards, and with the premium cards, we give the insurance right away. And the people who are part of the ICO, basically, they can decide whether they want to get the upside from the company or they just want to have these premium products. So they, whether they want to, you know, use these coins as, uh, as payments or they want to get the upside. So that's where the swap comes in. So yeah, I, think it's I mean, there's, there's many markets in retail for many types of consumers, right? You have the, the consumer who just wants to have their salary in, wants to pay their bills, and that's it. And then it goes from there to people that want to go all the way up to various types of insurance, homeowner's insurance, travel insurance, um, director's insurance if you're a director of a company. And you can go to the next level, which is people who want concierge services. And all that stuff can just be bundled into the card services as part of banking services. Exactly. No, exactly, exactly. So insurance is definitely something that you know, could be really well bundled with the cards. And we're really heavily looking into this, especially with the premium cards. In terms of the loans, so right now we're getting a payment license, what allows us to deal with the euros and get the salaries and so on. You know, I think that's something what we're going to focus on as well. But I think like in the... Com in our target group, the biggest thing is still investment and, you know, insurance and having this kind of like uh, cards where you can actually spend your investment. So we're going to focus on that as long as the community really demands that. And I know you should want that, you know, yeah. with loans. We demand, is, we demand, come on, <laughs> <laughs> give yeah, us more, <laughs> you know, come on. <laughs> yeah. 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 Listen, listen, we're, we definitely are, are working on this very hard and, you know, I think one thing what makes us different with low from a lot of crypto companies, we're really regulatory and compliant as well. So our risk manager actually used to work 10 years for a regulator. So one thing what, you know, you, you haven't seen behind the scenes because the card uh, issue with the Wavecrest is actually the team we've built. Our team is really like, you know, I've, I've been to big startups before, one peer to be a lending company, you know, a startup in the Netherlands. I've never worked in a team that good. You know, we have guys who are enthusiasts. We have, Niger you know, people from Nigeria, South Africa, Kazakhstan, Portugal, Brazil coming here together. Yeah. And, this is the thing where we try, we're going to try to make more videos. Actually, a one team video will come out very soon, but it shows our team. This is the thing we've been working on because when the team is good, we're iterating fast enough on the product. To, you know, to, to, you, cannot stop, you cannot stop it. So um, You can't so stop a moving train. So that's what you're telling us, right? You're a moving train and we can't stop you. That's what I think about it. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So with that, so you, 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 know, you brought up how we can use euros uh, on it. Or do you have plans to then roll it out into other countries, um, you know, in Asia and in, in North America? And, and what's your timeline for the different rollouts? Yeah. So right now, uh, we're really focusing on the European market. But, you know, one thing, uh, you know, really important to understand is, you know, the vision of this global crypto bank or this global financial services marketplace, you need to have a payment method for this. Right. right? So if you can right now pay everywhere in Bitcoin, there wouldn't be any problem with the marketplace because all the services will already be built on this. Why it's not? Because you still need to have something you pay with. 
Right. Mm -hmm. so now, as a company, we're going to uh, are having the issue that you cannot have the visa or, or MasterCard basic arrangement in each of the countries from day one because you need to work with integrators or Visa MasterCard directly to basically, you know, build these relationships. Yeah. So right now we chose just the biggest kind of a playing hub, what is Europe, 500 billion people in one jurisdiction. We yeah. want to try it out so they can pay, you know, in the future with all of these different assets and we can build this marketplace and different services on top of this. If this works, it's easy to scale up. You know, some of the other crypto cars or like crypto friendly cars that are out there, they have took and taken this approach that they just launch everywhere. They have the integration everywhere. But I don't think as a startup entrepreneur, I don't think it's the smartest thing because you need to find where the product market fit is. Mm -hmm. And then you need to start scaling it up. Everybody's already scaling it up because they raised yeah. $30 million. This is not how you, you know, uh, wisely run a startup. Well, the, the biggest problem you're going to have with the U.S. is the, is the, the, the license remittance per state. Um, exactly. Because you've got 50 states and all of them have their own, you know, legal restrictions. So anyway, exactly. That's, exactly. You know, there are ways to solve that. I'll tell you about that offline if you'd like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cool. exactly. So, uh, so, I mean, exactly. I mean, U.S. is, is somewhat, somewhat, somewhat like a mess, right? Because, I mean, look like the statements what, I, you know, SEC has been giving, giving out, I think. They are not as crypto friendly as us, for example. Right. If you look at the social feed of change, for example, you know, just last week for Estonian Parliament, Estonian politicians, uh, Global Blockchain, Blockchain Business Council was there in Estonian Parliament. Amazing. The change provided to the European Parliament two months ago or a bit further down, what is also in our social media. People want to talk about these kind of topics in Europe. If you look at the US, they're you know, all conservative. We don't want to talk about it. Blockchain. No, it's, it's, it's really true that the US is falling behind in tech, not because of Silicon Valley, but because of SEC and Treasury uh, and other parts of the US government and the politicians themselves who just don't know what's going on. And they're just, yeah. they're bewildered by this sudden movement that's a global phenomenon and it's just caught them with their pants down, which is not a very pleasant thought. <laughs> exactly. no, no, Pull your pants up and let's get going in America. <laughs> no, exactly, you're right, you're right. But, but to be honest, like, to answer your question, we do want to go outside and we know we have a lot of community outside as well, but just bear with us because we want to try out some things to, in this 500 million uh, kind of a sandbox, as, as you may, and then well, we will might... personally yeah. volunteer to be part of your sandbox trial users, Definitely. and we will Listen. we will document our experiences here on the show and let you and other people know how things are going and what's working and what's not. Because what's better Good. than actually people who will try the cards out and use them? Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, for example, this this card in Europe, you can already sign up. So, if you sign up now, you can actually. Uh, you know, we, we can ship you the cars already in the first half of the year, so uh, if not earlier. So, yeah, you, for all the Europeans out there in our community, to just sign up with, you know. Fantastic. Great, thank you. So uh, we had a lot more questions, but, you know, of course, we want to be conscious of the time. So I think we'll, if, if it's okay with you, we'd like to have you come back uh, maybe in one or two months' time when your card is out, and then we can ask you a whole string of other questions that we've got. Because I know there's always more to ask than there is for time. Is that, does, how does that sound for you? I mean, this sounds good. I mean, we always want to be really open with this. And uh, what I would encourage the community to do is try to imagine what kind of a decentralized kind of a bank would look like and just give us feedback as well. This is our ambition to build something really global. And Europe is just a testbed. So if you have feedback, let us know. And if you also have feedback about our you know, one of the first equity, to equity like token swaps in, your, in the world. So then let us, uh, let us know about this as well. This is a community driven thing. Our company was born on the internet, literally. So, uh, so we also want to run the company with you. So thanks a lot for the support. And Steve, Yuri, thanks a lot for having me here. Yeah, very pl great Thank pleasure. You. So we're, what we'll do is we'll also put the links to, you know, to change in the description below. But for those who are listening on Spotify, Christian, why don't you just tell everybody what the URL is to find you on change and where they can download your app. Uh, so they they can go to getchange.com. Uh, so basically, that's our main website, and uh, getchangecard.com is where you can sign up for the for the card waiting list. Fantastic. So, and Great. obviously, we have a Telegram group as well, which is really active, and and our community is really given a valuable support. So feel free to be part of this as well. And what's uh, the uh, what's the Telegram handle? Uh, the, I, I, I think that could be in the description below. But that's uh, fine. We'll put that out there for you. Perfect. We're definitely gonna change the world. <laughs> <laughs> Christian, thank you so much for joining us today. Everybody, this has been Christian Kang, Kang, I can't even say, it. Christian Kangro, the tongue twister guest of the day, <laughs> CEO of Change. Thank you so much for joining us on the show today. 
thanks everybody for listening in, taking the time to uh, participate and hear what's happening with change. Change is coming. And don't forget to give us a like and subscribe on the way out to the moon. Until next time.